I remember these little visual flashes. We had just crossed the harbor. We were like, hey, there are the guys, right? So we were all excited. And so we had crossed the water, and then there was a pop. It was like, Phew. and that's the last thing that I remembered. To look at the wreckage of the helicopter which crashed on an island off the coast of California in 2008, it's hard to imagine anyone survived. We lost three very precious lives. Laura Sharp was pulled from the burning debris. I was um, not conscious. Um, they lost me or near lost me several times. And they had, I was a flame. They had to beat the flames off me with my purse. My head was exploded open. The orbit of my left eye was completely shattered. With 43 fractures and burns across 40% of her body, Laura was given a grim prognosis. I would not be able to take care of myself. I would be able to smile and nod, but I wouldn't be able to perform or think deeply, comprehensively, com on a complex level. I would she was also told she might not walk again, never mind do yoga. But her biggest fear was that she wouldn't be able to take care of her daughter, Estelle. Back then, I wouldn't even picture her as she is today. I thought like she would be in a wheelchair, at least using a walker or crutches, you know, for the rest of her life. But just seeing her now, it's like, wow. Wow is about the best way to describe Laura today. It was a grueling journey to get here. I was in a 40 to 60 hour medical work week for two and a half years, day in, day out, five days a week, and then the other two days just, you know, recovering from the week. In the hospital, she contracted MRSA, which led to a partial amputation of her foot. But with multiple reconstructive surgeries, steel rods, and skin grafting, Laura was put back together again. I'm an amazing testament of fantastic medical treatment and care from some very passionate human beings who spend their lives uh, reassembling people, saving them, reconstructing them. During her recovery, Laura says what kept her going was the love of her family and the one part of her that the crash made more alive, her creativity. Level one trauma often involves disfigurement and disability. This is a representation of that in, on the structure of a rag doll, which is a metaphor and symbol of powerlessness. The rag dolls are Laura's art project, an expression of her mental pain that she believes literally helped heal her. Now, besides being an active mother, Laura devotes her time to trying to connect other trauma survivors with artists. The trauma survivor does not have to be an artist. They just have to want to participate. Laura says she's a living testament to a bright future possible for other trauma patients, willing to fight for mind, body, and soul. If you can appreciate how much you really do have to be grateful for, find that joy in yourself, then you can begin re-engaging with yourself and your surroundings. With Everyday Health, I'm Stephanie Sai.